Oh, well, I started playing bass because of um, Les Claypool oh, and oh. Lee. Talk about Is setting I... yourself like an impossible goal. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, I don't. Uh, I don't think I can ever be as good as they are. But the um, I guess one thing I've learned is that technical ability isn't important to me. It's just more about what is the what's the song that's coming out? What's the melody? Yeah. What are you hearing in your head and then trying to, you know, put onto the bass? And yeah. for me, simple stuff I like a lot. I guess for those guys, the, for me, with the melodies they were bringing or just the interesting way that Les Claypool leaves with his bass, yeah. like that's what that's what's inspiring to me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't compare myself to those guys, but, but I find. Uh, it's fine. I like Prince and look. You know I mean? I'm, not, I'm not there yet you know? yeah. I don't think I ever yeah. will be you know well, I'm, I mean? just, I'm just I'm just uh, I guess I'm grateful that um, music is about for me music is about melody and feel and not technical ability because that technical ability is not my um, yeah. strength I'm not a speedy bass player you know well, it's so. interesting when you do speak to players who are very technical that that's the last part they ever talk about like um like when i i've chatted with vernon reed from living color and like his whole thing is like almost that he kind of learned it so that he could get beyond it if you know what i mean so that he so he didn't have to be technical so that he did, could express himself the most freely he could but like not it not mess everything up i guess do you know what i mean but like but you know, he's so he's incredibly technical, but so that he can kind of switch off his brain, like switch off his brain and let it just yeah. kind of happen through him. So so even the yeah. most technical players, a lot of them, they they don't they're not thinking about it being technical as being the key. It's yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And for some reason, that's just bringing the band King Crimson to mind. Mm. So I don't know if you guys know them, but a bit, um, yeah. Court of the I, I feel King like and they're. I feel like they're examples of very technically gifted players, but um, the songs are many of the songs are just totally free form, and and it's it's clear they're not focused on how technically skilled they are. They're just playing the the music that comes into their head, and so I yeah. I, I think I see what you mean. Yeah, even um, when you listen to like Miles Davis with John McLaughlin, you'd think, oh, John McLaughlin, he must be playing like amazing stuff. Sometimes he's like playing a na 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 it just because uh, that's what he wants to do do you know what i mean just some real simple weird thing or some weird discordant chord which probably shouldn't fit anywhere but somehow just works because it's do you know what i mean a lot of the time he's not necessarily playing hugely technical stuff same with um the one uh who played for talking heads and bowie uh adrian yeah. blue yeah. yeah you know sometimes he's playing very technical stuff same with the uh, Frip is uh, King Crimson anyway, but yeah, yeah. But it's, the same, it's the same thing. Sometimes they're just like making a really nasty noise and they it's because they've got past whatever it was that they needed to so they could get on to making a really nasty noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something to aspire, aspire to. Anyway. Well, that's, that's something that I'm kind of excited about us for is that I think that um, we recognize, Josh and I recognize how important the role of discordant sound is to music and that keep that's one thing that keeps it interesting for us and and uh so that's something that's in our songs already and that'll continue yeah. to be there and i think that's just a really cool element the, the discord absolutely like one of the things that immediately draws draws me to you is is that and also i feel that's missing from like a lot of mod, like most modern music has nothing of any discord whatsoever in it. It's all made to yeah. be perfect. So you're like a natural antidote to kind of, you know, like what, <laughs> like the, uh, the predictability of, and uh, kind of lack of, lack of upset in like modern music, yeah. you know what I mean? And you think you agree with that, right, Josh? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I think that's pretty spot on. I mean, I, I feel like even more so with the newer stuff that we're doing, there's a, there's obviously good pop kind of influenced formula going on, but there's also like a lot of uh, 
really discordant things, very noisy kind of stuff. So there's a very solid contrast. And I mean, it just kind of shows a love for both sides, but definitely explore more on like the noisier side and very mm-hmm. like rhythmic, really driven, kind of like post-punk. Um, I always say like Sisters of Mercy is probably one of my biggest. Them, Christian Death, uh, a lot of like old school yeah, death rock, you know, goth bands and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say a closet goth right rhythm, and so like there's there's definitely a lot more of that. What? Yeah. <laughs> a goth in a Michael Jackson T-shirt. <laughs> what can I, well, I say? suppose thrillers, thrillers a horror thing. Anyway, maybe Michael Jackson yeah. was a. Yeah, he had um, is it scary as well, and uh, ghosts and all sorts of. He's actually. He's part goth himself, isn't he, Michael Jackson? <laughs> yeah, I think he's, he's so many things at once. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, started emo as well with that film Captain Emo. Oh, um, have I got that wrong? <laughs> yeah. 